So we are going to start looking at the difference between what we call nominal versus real gross domestic product. Uh, and the way this lecture is going to turn out, it's really going to be done in a series of three videos. Uh, the first one that we're doing right now, we're going to go in and we're going to tackle uh, what kind of problem we have with going in and actually measuring gross domestic product. And then once we define what the problem is, uh, video two is going to go in and devote its time to learning how to go in and fix the actual problem. And then video three will be going in and actually looking at how to take the fix that we have, the price index that we're going to generate, and then go in and actually apply it so that we can turn what we call nominal variables over into real variables. The first one that we're going to be doing is actually turning nominal gross domestic product into real gross domestic product. But then we're going to find out that all types of different variables, whether it be spending, uh, saving, uh, the wage, the real wage, uh, prices in the economy, all of these things uh, are going to suffer from the problem uh, that we're going to be describing here in just a little bit. And so let's go ahead then and let's get started on what this problem actually is. So uh, nominal versus real gross domestic product. The problem that we have in this entire thing uh, is going in and when we as economists measure gross domestic product every year, we are measuring what we call nominal gross domestic product. Uh, the dollar value of uh, final goods and services using current prices and current quantities. So what I want you to understand is when we go out every year and we look at the economy, the only thing that we have to look at is what prices are on different goods and services at the time and how many of those goods and services did we actually produce. So we are forced to actually go in and actually measure nominal gross domestic product every year. So what I mean by that is the equation that we've been using thus far, this C plus IG plus G plus X minus M, that is a perfectly valid equation for going in and measuring our national output. But it lacks uh, a, a certain amount of detail in it. And what I mean by that is this equation is really good for saying, hey, look, uh, if we go in and we buy a new automobile during the course of that year, uh, where is that automobile going to go? And we know it would go under personal consumption expenditures under durable goods. Uh, if the government goes out and uh, they spend money for national defense, then we know that money is going to go into um, uh, government expenditures. If businesses go out and they, uh, they replace some equipment that is old and no longer useful, then we know that that goes into I sub G uh, under the category of uh, replacement of worn out capital equipment. So the idea is, is that this equation is really good for going in and saying whether or not it should be included and where it should be included. But what it doesn't tell us is if we're going in and, and uh, you know, how we actually get the dollar value amount is actually by looking at this equation right here. So gross domestic product is going to be equal to the summation of all the prices and all the quantities of final goods and services that are going to be produced within our country's borders in a given year. So, I mean, it's one thing to go out and say that we produced uh, $10 billion worth of automobiles, but that number of 10 billion not only includes the quantity of the cars we produced, but it also includes the prices of those cars as well. Now, what I want you to understand is we are never going to go in and do uh, a, um, a calculation using this particular uh, equation. The only reason I wrote it like this was is that you can now actually see that that number that we get of $19.5 trillion actually comes from uh, multiplying prices and quantities together. So if that is true, 
then we also have to understand that our number for gross domestic product is actually going to change or can change for three different reasons. All right, the first reason is, is that we have prices, let's say from the year uh, 2019 until 2020, prices of all goods and services have fluctuated but the actual quantity of goods and services that we produced remained the same. So if you go in and you have prices going up while quantities are changing, if you go from one year to the next, you're gonna get a, a, a higher value for gross domestic product. If from 2019 to 2020, the prices of all of these goods and services remain the same, but we physically produce more of them, then you're going to get a higher value for gross domestic product. And then the problem that we're gonna have uh, is, and usually what happens in the real world, is that from 2019 until the year uh, 2020, not only do we produce more goods and services, more cars, more toothpaste, more tennis shoes, what have you, uh, but most of those goods are going to sell for a higher price than they did the previous year. Thus, if you go in and put a larger number for price and a larger number for quantity, then you're going to get an overall larger number for gross domestic product. And that goes in and that creates a problem because what we're trying to do is to go in and not just get a number for gross domestic product, we actually want to know how many more physically, uh, physical goods and services did we actually produce from one year to the next? And thus, the changes in prices are going to go in and they are going to mess with that number. All right, here's a real quick example to show you what that means. Let's go in and let's say that this top year that we are dealing with, let's say is the year 2019. All right, so through 2019. So in 2019, we actually produced 500 cars and they sold for 15,000 a piece. We produced 500 computers at $1,000 a piece, 500 TVs at $300 a piece, and 500 refrigerators at $750 a piece. All right, so using your equation of the summation of the price and quantity, so you would do price times quantity plus price times quantity and so on and so forth. And then you go in and add all of those up and you would get a gross domestic product number of $8,525,000. Okay, so that's going to be our, be our place to start. What we want to show, though, is that, hey, look, if we go from the year 2019 to the year 2020, and the only thing that has changed uh, during the course of this year is that now uh, prices are higher than they were the year before. So quantities are exactly the same, but now all the prices have gotten bigger. So we are still producing 500 automobiles, but now they're selling for $17,000 a piece. We're still producing 500 uh, computers, but now they're selling for $1,100 a piece and so on. So if you do price times quantity plus price times quantity and add all of this up, now we get a gross domestic product number of $9,800,000. Okay. Now, I want you to consider something. This is the problem uh, that we all fear. Because if you were to look at the gross domestic product number for 2019, and you were to look at the gross domestic product number for 2020, GDP has shown an increase. So therefore, you would have to conclude that we produced more goods and services in 2020 than we did in the year 2019. And I want you to look at your numbers again. Is that actually the case? And the answer is no. 
Now, you notice in 2019 and 2020, we produced exactly the same number of cars, computers, TVs, and refrigerators. So we did not produce one unit more than we did the year before, but yet gross domestic product shows that we did. All right, then you can have the situation where uh, if we, let's just say, again, uh, we're starting in 2019, and this is now actually 2020. So between this year and this year, the prices have remained the same, but now we're going in and we're producing more cars. Prices remain the same, producing more output and so on. So again, if you do your price times quantity, price times quantity, and add all this together, not only is the number higher than what it was in 2019, but it's a different number than we got uh, from our previous example. And then the worst of all possible situations is that both prices and quantities increase from the year 2019 until the year 2020. So we're now producing more cars, but we're selling those cars at a higher price, computers, TVs, and so on, and that's going to give us even a larger number than we had before. So there's the problem when we go in, because I want you to understand, when we go in and we're looking at our numbers, our physical numbers for gross domestic product, you don't see all of this back data. All you see is the actual final number for gross domestic product that has actually been published. So if we go down to the next slide here, you notice uh, if we go in and we measure nominal gross domestic product, remember that means that both prices and quantities are changing over time. We might measure the gross domestic product in the year 2000 to be 9.8 trillion in 2003 to be 11.3 trillion and 2006 to be all the way up to 12.7 trillion dollars sorry my, my screen keeps moving 12.7 trillion dollars so because we don't see what's happening in the background we're looking at these numbers and saying hey gross domestic product is going up this entire time that must mean that we are producing more output. Well, that's not necessarily true because we don't know from 2002 to 2003, was that all prices? Was it all quantities? Was it a little bit of both? Was it more quantity than price? Was it more price than quantity? We have no idea what is going on when we measure nominal gross domestic product. So, what I want you to understand, this is the big takeaway here, uh, nominal values, that is what we measure from year to year uh, because uh, that's the information that we have to work with. But to compare nominal values over time is useless because you have no idea whether it's all price, all quantity, a little bit of both, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so the question then is, uh, what do we do about that? How do we go in and how do we adjust for that? All right, well, the solution happens to be is to go in and take these nominal values that we're actually going in and we are measuring, and we want to go in and take that nominal value and convert it over into what we call a real value. So real gross domestic product measures the volume or the actual quantity of goods and services being produced by removing the effects of rising prices on nominal gross domestic product. So, in essence, when we go back and we look at those three different ways that gross domestic product can increase, what we are going to force to make happen is number two. We are going to force prices to remain constant over time, 
and that way we're only measuring the physical quantity of goods and services over time. So when we go in and we look at our summation of prices and quantities, if this is held fixed, then the only thing you are looking at is what has been the actual change in quantity, the number of pair of tennis shoes or the number of automobiles, refrigerators or whatnot, how many more or less physical goods and services did we actually produce? So that's gonna be the solution to this entire thing. Now, it sounds really complicated, but it turns out in theory, it's really not. All right, and here's what I mean by that. Let's go in, let's just take a real quick example. Let's say we go out in a too good economy and we measure what is called 2000 nominal gross domestic product. So we walk out into the economy in the year 2000. We notice that we produce 10 cars and those cars sold for $10,000 a piece. And we produce 10 stereos and each one of those stereos sold for $500 a piece. So price times quantity plus price times quantity, that gives us nominal gross domestic product of $105,000. Okay, then we go in and we go through time and we get to the year 2006. So we go out into the economy in 2006, look and see what is happening. And we notice that we actually produced 12 cars and each car actually sold for $12,000 a piece. So that's $144,000 of car production. We actually produced 12 stereos, each selling for $400 a piece. So that gives us actual stereo production of $4,800. So now we have nominal gross domestic product of $148,800. Okay. Now, the question ultimately is, is this number and this number comparable to each other? And the answer is no, between, because over this period of time between these two calculations, you had, well, in this particular case, uh, you had quantities that were increasing. So we definitely had quantities going up. Now, as far as prices, you notice the prices of cars went up, but the prices of stereos actually went down. So we have prices going up and going down at exactly the same time. So since prices are moving all over the place, um, when you have this scenario right here, uh, that means that those two numbers are definitely not comparable to each other. Okay. So the question ultimately becomes, all right, well, what are we going to do with that? How can we go in and how can we compare these numbers? Well, what we are going to do then is we are going to take this number, 2006 nominal gross domestic product, and we're going to convert it into 2006 real gross domestic product. Now, I want you to notice, and this is going to become a, a little bit more of an issue later, but you notice that in parentheses, I have listed here $2,000. All right. What that means is when you see that terminology, it means that we are going to be holding prices constant as if we were in the year 2000. Now, we know we're not. We're actually in the year 2006 but we're going to pretend like we are in the year 2000. So to do that calculation, for 2006, we actually produced uh, 12 automobiles. That's that number right there. But we're going to value them as if we were in the year uh, 2000. So we're going to value them at $10,000. In 2006, we actually produced uh, 12 stereos, but we are going to value them as if we were in the year 2000, which is going to be $500 a piece. So what we end up with then is we have 
12 cars at $10,000 apiece, 12 stereos at $500 apiece. So now we get real gross domestic product of $126,000. So the question then becomes now, the number that we now have for 2006, is it comparable to the number we have for the year 2000? Can we compare those two numbers to each other? And the answer is yes, we can. Because from this time, from this time period to this time period, prices remained constant. Those prices did not change, but quantities were allowed to change. And that is exactly what we were looking for right here. So what that tells us is if prices are, are held constant, then we can go in and we allow quantities to change, but as long as prices are held constant, then we go in and we have a number, two numbers that we can compare to each other. Because I, I want you to notice, and this is how big a, big a problem this potentially could actually be. If you went in and you compared this number to this number, you would have to conclude that output in the economy, because that's what gross domestic product is, is a measure of output. Output in the economy had to increase by 42%. So that number, those two numbers say that we produce 42% more goods and services than we did in the year, the, the year 2000. Well, clearly, we know that is not the case. But now that we've gone in and we've adjusted for those prices, if you compare this number with this number, then we would say that the actual change in quantity is not 42%, but it's only 20%. The change from here to here was only a 20% change. So that goes in and gives us a very nice unbiased numbers or two unbiased numbers that we can go in and we can look at and say just how much more output did we actually produce. Okay, now I do want you to think, okay, well, wait a minute. What if though over a period of time price level changes were in fact not a problem. So, in other words, if prices don't change at all, and it's only quantities that are changing in the real world, then why in the world would we be doing this in the first place? Okay, in this last slide that we have, uh, there are two lines. The first one that we have, this red line right here, is our nominal gross domestic product. So if we go in and we look at this red line, we notice it's going up and we know our economy is growing. And so uh, that's going to give us how much uh, our nominal gross domestic product has changed. But again, okay, and then we go in and we have our real uh, gross domestic product, which is going to be the blue line uh, that is going to be, well, if I can get it, the blue line or my green line that is going to be right here. Okay, the question becomes, if price level changes were not an issue, what would those two lines look like? And the answer is, yes, they would be exactly the same. One line, uh, those two lines would be lying right on top of each other. The other question is, are they? And the answer is no. Here and over here, Clearly, they are not going in and they are not lying on top of each other. So what that tells us is, is that these price level changes are in fact a problem and we need to go in and we need to deal with them or the numbers that we have coming out for gross domestic product are absolutely useless. So hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, we're going to go in and we're going to try to find a way to go in and do this. Because I want you to note, uh, you know, it's, there's quite a few numbers on here, uh, you know, and this is just a too good economy. What if you had 100,000 or 100 million good economy? 
even the best software that we have, Excel, what have you, to plug all this information in and try to get all that worked out would be a royal pain. In fact, logistically, it would be impossible to do. So what we are going to have to come up with is a shortcut method, if you will, to try to go in and find out how do we, first of all, measure those average prices, and then how do we go in and use that to adjust and turn nominal into real gross domestic product.